very interesting day today. I encountered my first moon landing denier today. <laughs> guy that doesn't believe we landed on the moon. Here's how I encountered this guy. I was at a fast food joint and the soda machine wasn't working. And I was frustrated with it and I just shouted out. I was going like, really? We put a man on the moon but we can't fix a soda machine in this dump? And that's why from across the restaurant this guy yelled at Yelled over at me, he's going like, we never landed on the moon, man! You know, because that's a perfectly acceptable thing to shout at a stranger across a crowded restaurant, you know? Some sort of conspiracy Tourette's. Can't imagine what else he's been doing, he's just going like, oh my god, they put pickles on my burger, I told them not to put pickles on my burger. Yo, 9-11 was an inside job! <laughs> But it would have been weird enough he had just left it at that, but no, this guy got up, he stood up, walked over to me, and tried to lecture me about how the moon landing was fake. <laughs> now, as a rational human being, I was actually kind of scared, shitless at this guy, but as a comedian, kind of wanted to see how this turned out. <laughs> so I let him go for like three minutes before I finally just stopped and go like, whoa, dude, first of all, what I said about the moon landing, it was just an expression. And secondly, we're at fucking Burger King, man. You just ate a cheeseburger for a dollar. At that price, there's no way in hell any part of that burger came from a cow. But okay, <laughs> you, the government's been lying to us, that's fine. I have found the best way to deal with a, a conspiracy nut is just to come up with your own conspiracy and, the, and see the conspiracy theory and see if they take on with it, take off with it. Like I encountered this one guy who just would not shut up about the JFK assassination. I was going like, you know, I just decided to change the subject. Going like, you know what I heard recently? I heard that the government started making crocs to get rid of toxic waste and to kill stupid people. Like they started making Crocs out of toxic waste, so it slowly seep into stupid people's skin and kill them off with cancer. And the guy was going like, oh yeah, I've heard about that. No, you fucking haven't! I just made that up, dude. I was in traffic the other day, I had a scary moment in traffic, I found myself, myself surrounded by bikers. Um, that's an intimidating moment, man, because... It, it, it's not as, it's a different type of intimidating than it used to be, because it seems to me like over the past 20 years, bikers all seem to get day jobs. I don't know what it was. And like good paying day jobs. And like 20 years ago, if you found yourself surrounded by bikers, you'd be going like, okay, don't make eye contact with them and they're going to kick your ass, man. But now it's a different type of scare. It's like, don't look at them. They're going to try to sell you insurance, man. Don't do it. <laughs> they're still going to kick your ass, but they're going to make sure you got a very reasonable deductible first. <laughs> motorcycles trip me up, man, because I just... They, they, the, motorcycles are the only vehicles on the road today that they're not trying to make any quieter. <laughs> Every car or truck commercial is just going to talk about how smooth and a quiet ride it is, but it's like with motorcycles, it's all. Bah, 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 bah. I don't know why that is. I was talking to a buddy of mine who rides, rides motorcycles, and he was, he was telling me, he's going, Oh man, you don't know what it's like, man, to have that engine between your legs and it's just vibrating. I'm going, Whoa, dude, I'm going to have to stop you right there. <laughs> there are machines that have that specific purpose, but they're not fucking motorcycles, dude. I don't... Go to the Midtown Superstore. They got plenty of them, man. You don't need to spend $100,000 on a, on a Harley for that. I recently got to see a guy on a, on a crotch rocket crash. Uh, he was trying to avoid a pothole, lost control, hit a curb went over the handlebars, and the bike landed on top of him. Uh, so sadly, he survived. <laughs> uh, I hate crotch rockets. They are just the bane of my existence. You know, the, the little plastic, the little... Got a small thing. Those kind of motorcycles. Yeah. I personally think that crotch rockets should be illegal to anybody under the age of 50. Because at that age, you should possess the knowledge and wisdom it takes to drive one of those things responsibly. 
Plus, at that age, if you're going to drive a vehicle based solely on the fact that your dick stopped working, people are a lot more understanding. <laughs> but when I see teenagers driving crotch rockets, that just drives me nuts. I see them all the time, you know, on the quick trip parking lot, having their little post-ride circle jerk or whatever it is they're doing there. But teenagers, I just want to go up to them and go like, did your parents buy that motorcycle for you? Because if they did, I think that is proof positive that they do not love you. <laughs> you know, they've, they've crunched all the data, they realize you are a completely worthless human being, and $8,000 for a motorcycle is small change compared to the half million dollar life insurance policy they have on your ass. Because <laughs> I think they realize just as much as I do how this is all going to play out. One of these nights, you're going to be trying to show off to your buddies that you could do a 70 mile an hour wheelie on the interstate. You're going to crash, slide head first into a guardrail, snapping your neck, killing you, and killing you instantly. You're going to get a two page spread in the yearbook, and they're going to play Green Days of Time of Your Life at your funeral, and then you'll be quickly forgotten. <laughs> forgotten by everybody except for the Institute for Highway Safety, who's going to be real sure to remember your ass when Geico tries to use that data to justify raising my rates another 15 goddamn dollars a month, thank you very fucking much. <laughs> For my next poem... <laughs> no. I'm just, uh, it is a crazy world we live in, man. There's a story that broke, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, about uh, AshleyMadison.com. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what this website is, it is a dating site specifically for married people. What? Yeah. <laughs> so they can cheat on their spouses. They are horrible, horrible people. Well, the website got hacked. These guys stole all of the users' data, all of their personal information. And they're saying that if they don't shut the website down permanently, they will release all that information. Okay? And how many users are we talking about? 37 million. That is 11% of the U.S. population, people, which means about five of you should be shitting your pants right about now. <laughs> it just, oh God, it just kills me. It's just a, that, that, oh, crazy. I'm, gonna, I'm working on a whole bit. Of course, every comedian is fucking working on some bit about that. That's the thing, man. It's like, that's, what, that's what comics do. We read the fucking newspaper, and it's, we, just, we, just, we just do it to get more information, but then we, to get more material. But then we are also trying to see what the other comics are doing and try to see who gets to it first. That's, <laughs> it's like a game of tag whenever, whenever a news story breaks. Okay, whatever the fuck that was. But I really, my favorite news stories are always the weird news stories. Like, whenever you, you know, the kind of news stories you read, you go, fucking what? And you have to read it a third time to a third or fourth time to get, finally get it. I read a story a, few, a couple of months ago about a guy in Seattle who was watching TV. They had an Amber Alert come on the TV. And the, uh, the guy quickly realized that the kid in the Amber Alert was the kid he was babysitting at the time. <laughs> now, I'm glad the kid is safe. These stories usually don't have a happy ending, but seriously, kidnappers, get your shit together, man. You can't just take somebody else's kid and then hire a nanny. That's not how it works, man. I think if you kidnap anybody, your schedule is full, okay? can't imagine what that's going through these guys' heads. Okay, we got the kid. Now all I'm going to do is just lay low for you a few days. Oh, shit, we were supposed to have dinner with my boss tonight. <laughs> well, I can't cancel. Well, hang on, let me go on Angie's list, try to find somebody reliable. No, what the fuck? There was a news story going back a few years ago that was about two park rangers in Yellowstone National Park who were fired, then arrested, after they were caught taking turns urinating into Old Faithful. The reporter felt it was necessary to explain that Old Faithful was not erupting at the time. No shit! <laughs> and that would have been a completely different story. It would have been two park rangers found dead today after challenging Mother Nature to a pissing contest. 
Well, my all-time favorite news story uh, was going back a few years ago to uh, New Jersey. There was a couple that was upset that their local bakery refused to put their son's name on his birthday cake. Because the kid's name, and I'm not making this up, was Adolf Hitler Campbell. There is an eight-year-old boy in New Jersey named after Hitler. And the best part of it, yeah, yeah, the parents were like neo-Nazis, and the best part of the news story was a quote from the father. He said, hey, all we're asking for is a little tolerance. <laughs> Neo-Nazi claiming intolerance. That's like getting sued for sexual harassment by a hooker. It just doesn't work out, man. <laughs> but an eight-year-old kid in New Jersey named after Hitler. I mean, you can't help but feel bad for that kid, you know, having to grow up in New Jersey. <laughs> and he's got that name, you know? He's just, he's just not going to have a normal childhood. Of course it'll be fine up until he takes his first history class, but after that... He'll never be able to play the board game Risk. <laughs> his friends will never let him live it down. So, oh, gee, Adolf's going for Eastern Europe again. What a fucking shock. <laughs> I guarantee you one of two possible outcomes for that kid. Either he's going to change his name when he turns 18, or he's going to go on to kill that guy at Pizza Hut who keeps hanging up on his ass. <laughs> I can say it now, he's going, oh my god, I just need a large, thin, supreme... No. Hello? Name's Adolf Hitler, hello? No. Although if he does grow up to kill that one guy, he's still doing 8 million times better than the last guy named Hitler, so let's try to be fair. <laughs> it's okay, I can make those jokes, because I'm German. <laughs> That's one thing people don't, don't really realize, the plight of the German-American. You know, that's a tough life, man. Because I'm not, a, I'm not allowed to hate anybody openly. Because everybody always assumes it's because of, you know, that thing. I don't know. I do love, the one, one of the things I love about being German is to see all of the people at Oktoberfest try to gloss it over, you know. He's been going, yes, come to Oktoberfest, where we have you know, we can celebrate all of German culture. Except for anything that happened between 1938 and 1945. We won't be discussing that here. <laughs> There's only so many times we can say that we are sorry. <laughs>